warm good morning to all let's begin the second session of day 2 and the speaker of the second session is dr abubakar kadangal uh, he completed his btech in mechanical engineering from rec calicut completed mtech in mechanical engineering with specialization in thermal turbo machines from iit madras completed phd with thesis entitled scaling and modeling of two phase natural circulation boiling instabilities from iit bombay the research is related to advanced heavy water reactor program of india he also received unido fellowship for training in flow measurement and control at national engineering laboratory united kingdom worked as research engineer at fluid control research institute from december 1987 to october 1994 from october 1994 onwards he is working as a faculty in mechanical engineering department lbs college of engineering castle board the field of research and interest is thermal and fluids engineering the courses taught are advanced engineering fluid dynamics computational fluid dynamics finite element methods advanced solid mechanics welcome sir welcome to the event thank you good evening raj kumar very good morning to you all and welcome to the second section of the second day on our ftp and insight to the computational mechanics and its industrial applications hope you have enjoyed and benefited from the previous sessions yesterday we started with uh, mr halim shah's first session in which uh, the future scope and challenges of computational mechanics was uh, explained and after that we had a session by mr abdur rahman of central water power research institute pune where we could see the real size hydraulic machinery that is the size we could get a feel of the size and scale of various fluid machineries used in engineering as well as the necessity of computational fluid dynamics or computational mechanics for the solving the real practical problems then afternoon you had a session on health that is first of all we have to be healthy then only we can do whatever we want so in that we could listen to what are the things we have to need to be fit and today morning we had a session on the application of open form uh, open source platform for this computational fluid dynamics in which we have seen a variety of interesting applications of cfd so this is in this fourth section this is a fundamental basic session so in which we will be seeing or will be reviewing what are the basic or fundamentals used for this computational mechanics so for this computational mechanics or cfd or fea everything are for solving problems of engineering applications so for solving problems or solving equations so first we need the equations so how or where from these equations coming and how these equations are there so that is called the modeling so equations how we get equations once we have the equation only we have to solve so first we need to understand how the equations and where from the equations are coming and what are the different types of equations what are the mathematical features of these equations etc and most of, of the popular equations in our fluid dynamics is navier-stokes equation
Okay, before going into detail, we have an overview of the presentations. So we'll have a brief introduction on what is computational mechanics, why computational mechanics, how the computational mechanics. So yesterday from Halim Shah's presentation had given a brief introduction about computational mechanics because this was the first session. The next we have the various methods of engineering analysis. Then we will go to continuum mechanics, then modeling of continuum mechanics, then areas of computational mechanics, then conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, and conservation of energy equations, which are the governing equations. And the, these equations are available or exist in integral form and differential forms. And different forms of conservation of momentum equations. So conservation of momentum equation is basically the second Newton's second law. So there are various forms of it in our fluid engineering. The nearest stock equations. Then Reynolds average, averaged in specifications. Then turbulence modeling. So these are the contents we will be just covering in this session. Okay, first computational mechanics. The so computational mechanics is the use of computational methods to study phenomena governed by the principle of mechanics. So actually it is a combination of mechanics, science, and mathematics. So these three subjects are required for solving these problems by computational methods. So before the emergence of this computational mechanics as a third way of besides theoretical and experimental mechanics, computational mechanics was widely considered to be a subject or sub-discipline of applied mechanics. So this computational method as a third method or third way emerged with the advancement of computer technology and with the increasing the computing power. So before that, it was considered to be a part of uh, applied mechanics. The applied mechanics, uh, there were many analytical methods and experimental methods were popular before this computational advancement. And it is now considered to be sub-discipline within the computational science. So why computational mechanics? So design and analysis is one of the important engineering activity in which engineers has to ensure the safe and efficient operation or the safe and efficient performance of the systems, machines, equipment, etc. They are actually made. So, the, so before the actual engineering systems are built, the engineers to analyze and predict the performance. Then, accordingly, they have to modify or redesign to make it safe and efficient operations. So, the, for this, various methods are available. So the methods available are, one is the experimental methods, analytical methods, and computational methods. So three methods are there. So analytical method and computational method, we can say the theoretical methods. And experimental methods, by actually building 
physical model or prototypes so experimental method we have to build the actual physical system and conduct performance test on the actual system built and this can be either of smaller size equipments or a real size equipments or actual size equipments so if it is built to the actual size and tests are performed on that it is called prototype testing and if it is a reduced scale equipment is man made and tests are conducted on that it is a scale down experimentations and if as micro and very small items for convenience of testing we may build a larger size and which is called a scale up models so if we are using a scale down scale up models to get the performance in the actual size equipments we need to interpolate or extrapolate the results from the model test so for that we have to use the scaling laws which are uh, again based on the theoretical mathematical models that is we have to maintain the similarity between the model and uh, the prototype and it has to be similarity should be maintained in many ways it should be statically stable or steady state stability should be there the dynamic stability should be there and also transient stability should be there this are to be there and be there. so more, many of the cases the model will be done at a smaller scale or scale down equipments because the building the actual size equipment will be very costly as well as very time consuming so usually what will be done is build a smaller size equipments then test it performance parallelly make a computational model also for this scale down model then validate the computational model with the physical results or the result from the physical model scale down model once we have a validated computational model that model can be used for predicting the performance of the actual size equipments so this is uh, not the easy job but it is good. so the advantage is we will have the validation of the our computational model with the same size physical equipment and once the computational model is validated the same model can be used to predict the performance of the actual equipment so during my research phd at iit bombay my job was to predict the stability boundaries for the ahwr uh, that is advanced water advanced heavy water nuclear reactor that is a new concept of reactor being designed at brc so for that our objective was to build a scale down model so the scaling was 1 by 3000 of the actual power then also the dimensions geometric scaling was by 1/4 so model of the one channel of the reactor was built and it was tested and also a parallelly a computational model was also developed and the computational model results were validated the experimental results and based on that computational model it will be able to predict the how the react for the stability margins for the actual reactor so 
scaling together with the computational method is are needed in the case of very critical equipments. So it is costly in terms of money, and that is experimental method is very costly as well as takes a lot of time. And but it gives reliable, realistic results because we are getting the results from the actual physical system without any modeling errors or numerical errors or truncation errors, etc. Difficulty in simulating upstream conditions, but for experimental conditions, there are some limitations for uh, simulating the extreme parametric conditions during the actual experimentation. But if it is a computation model, you can simulate any condition because we just need to uh, uh, input some numerical values. Simulating anything is possible. And second is theoretical method. So for experimental, what we need is a physical equipment. Physical thing is to be made or constructed or fabricated using the resources available in nature, so natural resources. But for theoretical models, we do not use this physical resources, but we, what we need is a mathematical model. So for analytical methods, the performance analysis is done with a theoretical or mathematical model. So instead of physical model, what we need is only a mathematical model. So mathematical model is a set of equations representing the physical system by mathematical equation, mathematical model. So mathematical model is a set of equations, but it, it should represent the physical system or it should characterize the physical system. That is, all the behaviors of the physical should dynamic and static behavior of the physical system should be represented in the mathematical model. So the mathematical model may be a system of algebraic equations or differential equations or integral differential or integral equations. So depending on the physics of the system. For most of the static problems, we may have algebraic equations. And for the dynamic system, that is fluid dynamics, solid dynamics, or moving systems, etc., cetera, we'll have differential or integral form of equations. So usually algebraic equation may be easy to solve, but differential or integral equations are very complex running this thermal and fluid flow problems. So, so that system of equations, we call it as mathematical model. And building that equations, we generally term as modeling, or formulating the physical systems into a set of equations is mathematical model. So what we have is we have a physical system. We want to convert or we need a con corresponding set of equations called mathematical model. And this is done by physical laws. So that is Newton's law, Fourier's law, or there are many scientific theorems or laws. So by using that, we can convert the or represent the physical system by a set of equations. And these physical laws, or these are all outcome of uh, experimentation or research conducted by many researchers or scientists for a long period of time. So historically, people have done many researches and investigations and all these results are formulated as some laws. That laws are used in converting the, or representing the physical terms in terms of mathematical model. So this mathematical model is the base for the theoretical method, whether it is analytical method or computational method. So how to solve this mathematical model is 
the question. So in analytical method, if we can get the exact closed form solutions, the mathematical model, then it is called the analytical method. But if the exact or closed form solutions for mathematical equations are possible, it is the analytical method. Exact means the, we have a set of equations and there will be a right hand side and left hand side. So both we can perfectly balance or both can be perfectly equated as closed form means that is within the domain. It will be the result will be available at all the points in a closed form or a function or an analytical function. That is if you have a road or a fin, you can estimate the temperature distribution by an exponential relation or parabolic equations, etc then there will be maybe t is equal to a function of a, x plus b, x square, etc. So by putting, if the range of the fin is a particular length, so in between that particular range of length, anywhere we can get the result or the temperature. That is just putting the value of x, we can get the closed form. That is the solution is available at all the points within the domain, including the boundary. That is called the closed form solution. Also, it will be exact solution because the solution is available by the standard mathematical procedures. So this is very not easy. So for most of the problems in continuum mechanics or fluid dynamics or these exact closed form solutions are not possible, except for very few simple cases. So in fluid mechanics, we may have these the stokes, first problem, second problem, then Poiseuille flow, rotating, flow between rotating cylinders, boundary layer solutions, glacier solutions, etc. Very few simplified cases we can have exact solutions that solution procedure it is itself is very complicated. We may have to introduce similarity parameters and we may have to convert PDEs to ODEs, etc. So even with the most of the difficult procedures, the solutions are available only for very few simplified cases. But most of the cases we don't have the analytical solutions. So the, the option left is the computational method. So in the computational method, what we look for is an appro approximate solution because we cannot have exact, but we, but we have to be satisfied with approximate solutions or approximate numerical solutions are obtained using computational methods. So the exact, it was closed form, here it is numerical solutions, means we'll have the solution as numbers at a finite number of points or at discrete points. We will not have the solution at all points within the domain or within the region, but we will have the solution in terms of numbers at selected or predefined points within the domain. So that points we may call grid points or nodal points or nodes, et cetera, will be there. So this is, so this approximate solution has to be reasonably accurate also. Approximate means it should not be far away from the exact solution. Even though we don't know what is the exact solution, but it has to be closer to the expected exact solution. So to ensure that we are getting the approximate uh, solutions which are closer to the exact solution, we have to maintain some conditions in the procedures. That is this numerical method or computational method has to be consistent. It has to be stable 
and it has to be convergent, etc. should be there. So during these procedures, we have to ensure many conditions to satisfy or to get the reasonably accurate approximate solutions. In all these computational methods, the basis is the differential equations are approximated by algebraic equation, which can be solved by direct or iterative numerical methods. So the solution is difficult because these equations governing the physical problems. So most of the dynamic problems or flow or movement, etc., are rate of change with respect to time and rate of change with respect to space, or we call it as temporal and spatial variations will be there. So once it is formulated, automatically it will result in differential equations. Also that differential equation, there are many parameters will be there are integrated. So it will be partial differential equations. It also may be nonlinear partial differential equation, which are etc. So these are all almost impossible to have numerical, sorry, to have analytical solutions. So in such case, main complexity is the differential equation or differential operator. So if this differential operator can be replaced as break equation, algebra, we don't have the rate of change, etc. or derivatives are not. So if it is converted into algebraic equation, get the solutions, either numerical methods, or some cases we may have direct methods. So either by direct or iterative numerical method used for getting the algebraic equations. So the basic or main importance is how we convert differential equations to algebraic equations. Also computational methods sometimes give unrealistic results. So validation of the method is very important. So we may formulate an equation where we may convert into some algebraic equation and we may get some solutions. But the solution may be sometimes totally absurd or furious and which is very beyond the realistic values. So we need the validation, at least in some regions or at selected points, so that the solution what we have obtained is the realistic results. So with, with all the computational methods, the validation is also important. So validation may, may be either with the experimental results or with the there are some benchmark problems or analytical solutions are existing. Such problems are called benchmark problems. Also, we need not do experimentation ourselves, but we maybe we can take the results from the published literature. So by comparing the experiments, results of the experiment from published literatures, we can validate the computational methods. So the popular method for approximating the differential equations into algebraic equations are one is the finite difference methods or FDM, abbreviated as finite difference method, as abbreviated as FDM, in which the differential operator, the differential equation will have a different operator. So the differential operator or differential is approximated by difference and the finite number of grid points. Difference is an algebraic operation. Differential is a calculus operation. So if we, the di differential approximated by difference, it becomes an algebraic equation. And this approximation will be done at finite number of grid points. Whereas differential will be at infinite number of points will be there because it is a continuous or closed form. That is the differential operator with definition. Limit delta x 10 to 0 or limit delta t 10 to 0, etc. So there is 
no gap between two adjacent points so it's almost zero whereas here you know, a finite difference will be there so, right all this finite comes so the, there the approximate so there is this finite difference method and this is the one of the simplest method of these computational methods but its application is limited because we need regular geometries and etc because for this discretization so it's limited mostly for heat conduction and simple problems simple geometry or simple domain problems it is limited another is finite element method or abbreviated f e m so here the field variable is approximated by 12 functions over the finite number of subdomains and this finite number of subdomains are also called elements and then integrated over the elements by multiplying suitable weighting functions so here the difference here the of governing equation or the differential equation is not approximated whereas in the first case the governing equation itself was approximated that is the physics of the problem is approximated whereas here the physics of the problem is not altered or not approximated because we are retaining the differential in differential equation step itself so what we do here is that the given domain will be in, divided into finite number of sub domains and in each domain the field variable if it is a flow, flow problem the field variables are the velocity or velocity components heat transfer from the temperature maybe maybe the field variable that is the temperature may be changing from point to point velocity will be ch changing from point to point etc so that will be approximated as a function called trial function or shape function which we can choose you mostly usually the polynomials are taken as trial function because they are simple to integrate and differentiate etc so i have a set of trial functions then substituting the trial functions into the differential equation it will be integrated over the domain or the range of the element not the domain only a small region of the uh, or we call it as element of the domain then uh, for convenience or uh, for some reasons it will be multiplied by a suitable functions called weighting functions then uh, after integrating it will be equated to zero and we can so once it is integrated and equated to zero it becomes a set of algebraic equations so here the it is converted from differential equation into algebraic equation by this dividing into elements and integrating after multiplying a weighting functions and different weighting functions are available if you choose different different names are there that is subdomain method collocation method galerkin method this square method many methods of finite element methods are possible and the third is finite volume methods here also the differential equation is not approximated there also the differential equation is integrated over a finite number of control volumes so the given domain will be divided into finite number of control volumes and each control volume having a point called grid point or control point will be there. whereas in finite element the, the element may have many grid points whereas in finite in the uh, control volume or finite volume method will have each control volume have a just one single control point or single grid point where the field variable will be defined so after sub uh, defined that uh, then that equation will be integrated over that control volume and uh, between the adjacent control volumes the field variable can vary that variation can take different shapes linear second order third order etc and uh, 
and when we integrate, we may have this uh, some derivative of the field variables also will be existing. And that will be approximated using suitable functions. All the three methods are different, but objective is to convert the differential equations into algebraic equations. So out of this, finite difference equation is the simplest and finite volume method is next. And most complex is finite element method because of its formulation. But once it is formulated, its application is very generic. That can be used for most of the problems that is governed by the similar type of equations. And finite uh, element methods are mostly popular with the structural and solid mechanics problems. And finite volume method is popular with the CFD in open form as well as in fluent or this uh, CFD packages, finite volume method is commonly used. And one more method is uh, boundary element methods. Uh, it's more pop popular with acoustic systems in acoustics and here uh, attempts to use the given boundary conditions to boundary values into integral equation. So the given boundary conditions are used at the boundaries value into the integral equation. So, so we will have uh, detailed sessions on all these the coming days so on finite difference method and boundary methods uh, dr manu <coughs> will be taking this session the finite element method dr ajit will be handling a detailed session and finite volume method professor anil lal will handle a session tomorrow so we will have detailed sessions on all these in the coming days so next, how, so we have seen what is computational and computational mechanics and how computational mechanics. So first computation, so the computational mechanics is we have a system of mechanics, which is converted into a set of mathematical equation or mathematical model. And we need to solve it. There are various methods of solving it. So that, uh, system, that physical system, we call it as a continuum mechanics. So that uh, solution is applied on a physical system, which is represented as a continuum mechanics. So continuum in, in the basics of thermodynamics or fluid mechanics, we'll be starting with the continu continuum concept. This continuum mechanics or brand mechanics that deals with mechanical behavior of materials models as a continuous mass rather than discrete particles. We know that all the materials, whether it is gas, liquids, or solids are made up of atoms and molecules. And there will be some gaps it's at, between gases or liquids. There will be some space or gap between these molecules. So if we in microscopic or nano scale, they are so not lesser than that. If they are not continuous, there will be some minute gaps are there. So in continuum concept, what we do is we assume that there are no gaps. So that even if you take a, any minute element of that matter, we will assume that there is no void, so there are no gaps. It is continuously filled with that material. So that is called that concept is called the continuum concept. It is mechanical, and this objective is to predict the material behavior, creating as a continuous ma mass rather than the discrete particles. Even though they are discrete particles, we can treat it as a continuous collection of matter. And for that, we ensure a minimum size. If it is lesser than that size, there may be some sizes in which no particle at all 
or there may be some element in which some particles are there. So we have to have the minimum size requirement of element should be there. And that is defined by this Knudsen number, which is the ratio of uh, this uh, to the mean, mean part, the actual dimension to the ratio to the that you have studied, meta study. So if it is very small, we may have uh, this variation to have a consistent result, we should have main, main, maintain a minimum delta of it, that infinitesimal size. And this was introduced by a French mathematician, Augustine Louis Cauchy. So it was the first formal to form this uh, continuing concept in 19th century. So we have this uh, equations, Cauchy's equations, etc. there for this or continuum mechanics. So we, we were the person who introduced. And modeling an object as a continuum assumes that the substance of the object is completely free the space it occupies. The continuum is a body that can be continually subdivided into infinitesimal element with the properties being those of the bulk method. So that continuum should be a material can be divided into infinite or infinite number of elements. Even that one of that infinite element should maintain or satisfy the properties of the original thing. So that we can treat the properties as point functions. So by the introduction of the continuum concept only, we are able to treat these properties, density, pressure, temperature, etc., as point functions. Also, it is a subject that unifies the core subject of mechanical, such as its continuum, solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, and heat transfer. So in all this, the continuum mechanics is subject. So the continuum mechanics unifies the core subject of Mechanical engineering. So we have an equipment. Yesterday in Halim Shah's presentation, he was to, uh, talking of rocket engines. So in the rocket engine, if you consider, you'll have uh, solid mechanics. That is in the design of uh, its blades, its rotors, its casing, etc. Solid mechanics is important. Ro rotor dynamics, then fluid mechanics, flow of this. That is, first it has to pass through the process flow around the compressor blades, then expansion through turbine, then combustion, thermodynamics, and heat transfer, that is cooling of turbine blades, turbine, etc. Okay. So all these continuum mechanics topics are, are are essential in many of these practical applications even in our ice engines or air conditioning everywhere we need to have this continuum mechanics and continuum mechanics seeks to develop predictive mathematical model of material behavior relating to the applied forces to the material deformation and motion. So the objective is even we are treating it as a con continuous model so that we can or we are able to predict how the material will be behaving when subjected to forces. So actually mechanics or mechanical engineering is related to force and motions. So when, when a physical system or when a material is subjected to some forces, how it behaves that we should be able to predict. So for getting that prediction, how a material is behaving under different load conditions or under different force conditions, this continuing concept is used. Like if you have a physical shape or physical body, when it is subjected to some force systems, the effect of this may be Maybe some uh, change in position and change in shape 
sa is acceptable we say so we we should be or we'll be, we should we need to be able to predict what is the influence of these forces on the shape size and position of on the bodies so that has to be put it in terms of equations or mathematical equations so for solids we will be expressing with force as a force will be number of forces will be that so we can represent it as a vector the system of forces f will be a function of displacement or deformations the displacement or deformations will be there and it will be related by the behavior or physical characteristics or physical constant of the material so force will have a deformation or a rotational vector or displacements but it is proportional to the physical constants or physical properties of the material so if you have materials we may have same force may have different displacement or deformations that is the same force will be giving different values of deformations or displacement because of the physical behavior or physical characteristics difference so the physical this k represent the physical characteristics of the material this is the applied force and this in the case of fluids when it is subject to force it will create not a deformation it will be a continuous deformation or a motion rate of change so there will be an acceleration so in the case fluids instead of a physical k into u you may have a certification mass into this uh, u double dot can derivative of that displacement so these are that mathematical use uh, representation of this physical system using this we will be able to predict the behavior or what happens to the the given physical system when it is subjected to some forces so that also that is the displacement getting this so this procedure is called solid this first part is modeling and getting the output subject to the given input is called the solution so these are the solution procedure in the case of fluids also you have to this should be there. so this is a simple manner how we model and solution of various physical or continuum systems or physical systems by applying the continuum concepts the next uh, modeling of computational okay. modeling as we said it is converting the physical systems into set of equations mathematical equations so for that we need laws so modeling of continuum mechanics is especially based on upon three fundamental mechanical principles so commonly known as conservation of laws or balance law so for this the laws we use is this three fundamental principles or fundamental mechanical principles the law of conservation of energy law of conservation of momentum and the law of conservation of energy or law of balance of energy and the balance of momentum in momentum we have linear momentum as well as angular momentum so if you split there will be four laws so this is uh, for our thermo fluid system in which there is no reactions or combustion is taking place if addition to this chemical reactions or combustion is taking place there will be one more law called the conservation of species also to be considered so usually for mechanical engineering we will be will be satisfied with this law of conservation of mass momentum and energy so the first one is mass mass momentum and energy and these laws are postulated in the form of equations differential or integral form so all this conservation of a mass is a differential or we can have it in integral form momentum also in differential and integral form energy is also there such equations gives rise to field equations that should be that should hold at every point of continuum and that is the equations are to be valid for the entire region 
of the domain of or the physical system we are chosen including its boundaries also for all the times it should not be valid only at a particular instant of time so throughout its operation time or during its operation as well as everywhere within and on the boundary that should be valid so that we call the field variables or field equations the important feature of the field equation is that these equations are applicable to all continuum that is solid liquids gases regardless of their internal physical structure that should be valid irrespective of whether it is gas liquid or and these equations are supplemented by certain additional basic equations so we may have a conservation of mass momentum energy mass mass is a scalar quantity so we'll have a single equation momentum is a vector quantity so we'll have three components and energy is also a single equation so totally we can have five component equations in a thermal physics we have three velocity components then we'll have pressure temperature and density so we may have five equations and six variables so for solving six variables we need six equations so we need additional equations but that additional equations are called or closure closure relations etc so the additional equations are that is equation of state so we can have an equation p by rho is equal to rt that is equation relating pressure temperature and density so by introducing this we have the six equations and uh, also in constitutive relations are there so when we derive this uh, momentum equations stress and strains has to be related so for that we have to relate the constitutive equation which relates stress and strain or rate of stress to rate of strain in fluids and solids we have constitutive equation as the stress to strain in fluids it is rate of stress to sorry stress to rate of strain stress to rate of strain in fluids and solids stress to strain also turbulent when we uh, discuss of turbulent flows there are continuous fluctuations which is random and chaotic so for modeling or uh, for uh, modeling that we need some models or that is called a turbulence model for models so these are all additional equations so if we use a turbulence model say k epsilon model so we need we will have two more differential equations so k epsilon means we have in addition to this five conservation of mass momentum energy equations two more equations have to be solved for the k and epsilon etc area of this computational mechanics as we saw that's materials which are all deformable materials so we have materials such deformable and rigid because this rigid materials we don't have it in practice we we'll only study it in our engineering mechanics the objective of this is the reactions for force analysis etc that is required for this understanding or studying the deformable bodies so we have deformable bodies and a theoretical concept is there rigid bodies also then deformable we have solids and fluids and in fluids we have liquids and gas so this continuum mechanics concept is applied for this solids as well as fluids so which includes gas liquid etc so all these are the region of our industry and based on we have different this combined mechanics solid mechanics problems are there fluid mechanics is there and elasticity is also special of fluid, fluid solid mechanics is plasticity that is difference is so applied stress are removed so that elasticity means the once applied stress is removed if it is regaining 
its shape, it is called elasticity. If not coming back to its plasticity, then fluids, Newtonian, non-Newtonian, rheology, etc. You know, so based on that, we have different uh, fields of interest, uh, field, of, field of studies or area of studies. So the, to all these fields, this computation mechanics is applicable. And for that, we had two fluids, two cases are there. So main difference between solids and fluids. So solids and fluids, basically there are two differences in mechanics point of view. One is uh, solid can resist shear stress at rest, or flu fluid cannot resist shear stress. At rest, they are different. So in fluids, sorry, in solids, no, sorry, in, in solids, shear stress is possible at rest. Fluids, there is no shear stress at rest. Whereas in motion, Solid shear stress is proportional to shear strain. In fluid, it is a proportional width of strain. So that is, fluid is continuously deforming. So we have to take a rate, rate is change of with respect to time. Whereas here it is a finite, so it is directly proportional to this. Also, this mathematically we can treat it as shear stress is proportional to shear strain in solids. So shear stress is denoted by tau and shear strain is gamma. So it is tau is equal to g into gamma, where g is the proportionality constant. It's called the modulus of rigidity. And in fluids, tau is proportional to d by dt, rate of change of gamma. And it is equated by introducing a physical constant called tau is mu d but d by dt of gamma is the rate of shear strain, where mu is the viscosity or coefficient of viscosity. So the two main difference between solid and fluid is that is this. So two difference. One is no shear stress at rest, this proportionality of stress to strain. Then also force, we have said that we have two classification of force, surface force, because this is important when we formulate the momentum equations. We need to consider the two types of forces. So one type is physical conduct called surface force, another without physical conduct called body forces. It will be acting at every point. So this uh, surface force will introduce stresses, shear stresses. Okay. Yes. And the effect of force, all of you know, that is on rigid bodies, it will include translation, rectilinear, etc. On solids, it is translation, rotation. It will be there either it is rigid or non deformable. And deformable bodies, change in size will be there, dilatation will be there, or it's called deformation, linear deformation. And change in shape is angular deformation or distortion. So this is caused by the tangential component of stress or shear stress. And change in size is caused to, due to the normal st type uh, stress compounds. So we have two stress compounds, normal and shear. So normal stress components will cause dilatation or change in size. And uh, stresses will in in induce distortion or angular deformation or change in angles. And uh, on fluids, the dilatation is changing continuously. That is, chase maybe. So this will be zero in the case of incompressible fluids dilatation. And distortion will be there continuously deforming. This we call it as flow. So the effect of force on fluid is to cause flow. And rigid on reformable bodies, deformation as well as motion. Okay, next. So when we study the fluid motion, the acceleration field is also important. So usually we have the velocity field, a vector is position of function of positions, that is space coordinate, x, y, z, and t. So v is a function of its or its location as well as time. So we want to have a derivative, dv by chain rule, we can have that, dv by dx, dx, 
dv by dy dy except the stain rule will be there so dv by dt will have so that's from this we have acceleration as dv by dt this dx by dt is u so u into dou v by dou x plus v dou v by dou y plus this so this is the acceleration we will be using it is in our all these equations especially in nels stokes equation so that's why i just introduced it here <clears throat> also in vector form we will be denoting this velocity as ui plus v plus w t and also this del operator is uh, very essential for our fluid dynamics so there is a operator l which is i do by do x plus j do by do y plus k do by do x and <clears throat> so this acceleration is this first term is called uh, the acceleration or convective acceleration x direction convective acceleration in y direction convective acceleration in z direction and this is local acceleration so the total acceleration is combination of local acceleration plus convective acceleration so this convective is the change from space velocity is changing from with respect to space so the acceleration cause due to change in position is convective and with respect to time at a particular position is this so usually this acceleration can be put it as so this v dot del it is v multiplied by this we have because i i dot i is equal to 1 i dot d is equal to 0 etc we will have v dot del is equal to u do by do x v. so this can be you expressed using this operators <coughs> so our acceleration convective acceleration is put in vector form v dot del v so usually if you are reading some literatures uh, general purpose etc these governing equations will be put uh, put in this uh, vector form which are very compact notations so using this so v dot del operator of v is our convective acceleration another frequently used uh, operator is in this is our you have this del operator this the gradient of a scalar field is del operated on a scalar field say pressure the gradient of a pressure field is a vector so these are the pressure gradient actually pressure is a scalar <coughs> but if you take its gradient it will become a vector so pressure gradient in x direction y direction is a gradient similarly you can have a gradient of a temperature field we will have that heat flux If you multiply with the area and conductivity, you can have that. So gradient of scalar quantities will result in vector quantities, and divergence of vector will be a scalar quantity. But the divergence of a vector, velocity vector, will be a scalar quantity. Another operator, we, so where our velocity vector is this, and curl is another operator that is del cross. Uh, it's again a vector, but its direction is perpendicular to vertex. So I think uh, this is curl. Curl is also vorticity or circulation. So that's okay. And another derivative is that is because of our acceleration, we have uh, uh, this is uh, combination of this is our convective acceleration in vector notation. And this local acceleration will be together called the, that the d by dt or capital D by dt. It's material derivatives. It is uh, non-linear, so because it's v dot, so it's a product, second order. P is multiplied by its derivative, so it is a non-linear, and it is a challenge. And also, it represents the transformation between <coughs> Lagrangian and Eulerian. Then fluid mechanics. That Lagrangian is we will be concentrate on a system, a particular mass. Whereas Eulerian is we concentrate or we focus on a particular region. So the relationship between particular system and region is obtained through this relationship. Also, 
<coughs> there is Reynolds transport theorem to relate the system to control volume approaches. Total part, okay, these are also another names, total derivatives, substantial derivatives, etc. The system that is a definite matter. Control volume is only region is based, the mass may burning and go. so we can have conservation of mass for a system as well as for a control volume. So if it create a system, the conservation of mass of a closed system, that is, mass of the system is constant. D by rate of change of mass with respect to time is zero. D by dt of mass. No doubt. Which is the statement that the mass of the constant during the process. Whereas in the case of control, we have a control volume as well as control surface. So in the control system, we can have open system. Control volume is also open system. So the mass can enter, mass can go out. Also, that can have a mass in the within system. So the conservation of mass. For mass balance for control volume is in the rate form. It is d by dt of is, what is mass in minus what is going out. In the rate of change of this And if you have a control surface, the mass flow rate over a control surface will be usually evaluated by using a small element. Over the control surface, control volume will be bounded by a control surface. And over the control surface, a small elemental area of dA, there will be some velocity and also will have its normal. Control surface at different points may have different uh, normal directions. And the velocity may be different from the no, normal directions. So we be able to get that different uh, elemental mass flow rate over this element as rho, it is uh, density, Vn, dA. So the Vn is the velocity normal to the surface. Or in, along the normal to the surface, dA. And over the entire surface, it will be integral of that, that will be rho V n dA. So we use this integral A of the control surface, rho V n dA, in our uh, conservation mass equation in integral forms. That is, it is from uh, considering as elemental area and integrating over this. And V O N D A can be written as V dot D A will be. So we have so for deriving the conservation of mass in integral form, what we take is we take a control finite control volume. So as I said earlier, we have two forms of equation, integral form as well as form. So integral forms of the equations are resulted if you consider a finite control volume. That is finite means still having a sufficient size for the region we have selected. Then what we result is a, which will have a control surface and the resulting equation be a 
integral form of equations. The other differential forms are formed if you are considering, so we are starting our analysis with respect to an infinitesimal element. The infinitesimal element will be having a size 1 by infinity. It is delta x 1 by infinity, tending to 1 by infinity, delta y tending to infinity, 1 by infinity, delta n, the delta v also tending to infinity. So if you are get the properties at all the points, only over the surface and what are the overall change take, taking place within the control volume will be there. So here, to get this, we consider a small dm, then the mass within the system is rho dv integrated, then rate of change what in the system, d by dt of this is rho by dt. I'll just A normal component of velocity Vn is that is uh, V dot Pn. That is V cos theta is V dot Pn. So differential mass flow out or in over the entire volume. We can this is there. So M dot net is that is through the entire control surface, and from this we will get the general form of conservation of mass equation. So this is the conservation of mass equation. In integral form, we have two terms here. One is d by dt of integral over the control rho. So this is rate of change within the control volume. And this is the net flow across the control surface. So integral form, it is have two terms. One is what is happening within the control volume and what happens across the control surface. So this is. Uh, So the sum of it is that is because mass has to be constant has to be zero. So this is an example state like that. If we apply to a simple system like this, a small piece of pipe with a cross section and it's normal, and there is inclined, we have this day by dirty within the system plus out this v this okay next is uh, so three basic or fundamental equation conservation of mass momentum and energy so we have seen the conservation of mass in integral form in the previous slide next is the momentum momentum linear and angular momentum is there the so product of the mass and the velocity of a body is the linear momentum the momentum of a rigid body of a mass moving with velocity d is mv. Conservation of momentum. Momentum of a system remains constant only when the net force acting on it is zero. Or does the momentum of a such system is constant? Momentum, because the rate of change of mass was zero, but here it is conserved only if the net force is zero. If there is a net force, then there will be momentum. So that is the conservation of momentum or momentum balance. And this is the Newton's second law. So it's a proportional acceleration. Acceleration is proportional to the net force and is inversely proportional to its mass. That is it. The physical term, it's everybody, every one of you will be knowing that. And so when it is put in this form, integral form, it is by dt of mass, the velocity of the system is this. So generally, you can let us put it as, this is the general expression, if it is, it's more relative velocity there. If the control system is not moving, so this also we can obtain the Reynolds transport theorem. 
that is a general theorem which we can relate system to control body the only thing is we have to replace intensity intensity sorry intensity property the small b is an intensity capital d so using the uh, momentum equation the intensity property is b b is this intensity means per unit mass so the extensive property is momentum that is mv divided by m will be v so using this we can get that so the linear momentum equation the conservation of energy is also similar So this uh, are the uh, mm -hmm. integral form of conservation of mass and energy equations. So the uh, integral forms are uh, its use is limited, but it can be used as a system. Under system analysis, we can consider the and in the integral form of equations. But most uh, as a summary, you can. The three equations: conservation of mass equation. It is in for system. It is like this. The integral form is this. Conservation of momentum equation is d by d to whom v is equal to sigma f. It is this. It's uh, integral. So this summarizes the three conservative conservation or balance equations in in the. Next is the differential form of these equations. So for uh, so differential form of mass, differential form of momentum balance, and differential form of energy balance. So for that we have an infinitesimal in Cartesian coordinate. That is, its sizes are delta x, delta y, delta z are tending to zero. And we have these six phases, or so on each phase of that. Rho into u, that is mass flux. So rho u multiplied by area will get the mass flow rate. So this is flow approaching through this phase, and we will have it is going out through that phase. The vertically incoming, vertically going out. That in z direction, in out, etc. Is it? So from our that is so by balancing this net flow into this with what is happening within the control volume or with this differential volume we get the actual form of equations. <clears throat> so this is the rate of increase of mass in fluid element is equal to net rate of mass. Up. So whatever net what is coming in should be equal to what is the net rate of change. So by <clears throat> balancing this we will get the equation of this form so this is our this is the net <coughs> flow entering into the system and which will be equated to this and what we get is the final form of conservation of mass equation that is rho by delta this is the change within the volume delta x delta y delta is the volume in the density is the mass so rate of change of mass this the dot by dot of rho dg. So conservation of mass means change within the system is equal to incoming. So equating this, we will have this. And it is put in compact vector form. It is dot do by dot of rho plus delta dot rho v is equal to zero. So this vector form of conservation of mass equation is this, and it is its scalar expanded form. So we, this will be usually used in the solution of uh, or CFD in, a, in combination with the conservation of momentum equation or Navier-Stokes equation. So these equations are also one of the important equations in CFD. And if it is incompressible, this term will be zero and we'll have only so this is the form of continuity equation or conservation of mass equation or in vector form is this an integral form is this equation in special cases if it is steady state 
this time variation will be zero. So steady state of this will be zero. For integral form steady state, only one term will be there. And in vector form, del dot rho v is equal to zero for steady state. Or if we can put it as a, in, in, but from this raw raw AV is a constant. That is what is coming in has to be from this. Then for incompressible, raw is constant. So raw is constant in this what is the term in the back it should be zero. Or in vector form, del dot of raw is raw del dot e plus this. So del dot of raw is to be zero. So it is raw del dot e. Zero or del dot v is equal to zero. So this is uh, the <coughs> incompressible form of continuity equation, incompressible flow. And this is also rate of dilatation yeah, is zero in the case of incompressible fluids. So that is dilatation is zero for incompressible flow. Del dot V is equal to zero. And in the general form, I'd say I can write it as draw is taken constant. So V A V is a constant. So A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. So next is the differential <coughs> form of random equation. So which is the one of the important equations in fluid dynamics, which is uh, popularly known as navy equations. So differential form of conservation of momentum equations is there. So the area conservation form of equations are there. Cauchy's equation. <coughs> Cauchy introduced the concept of continuum. And the first equation of momentum equation is named, it's called Cauchy's equation, that is a force in terms of stress comma. So F is equal to rate of change of momentum. So forces are expressed in terms of stress component, then resulting equation is Cauchy's equations. It is applicable for both fluids as well as solids. That is for all the continuum mechanics problems. It is applicable. And this is the differential equation of it. Solid mechanics. And second is Euler equation. This is for inviscid fluids, no shear stress components. So force will of stress component will have shear stress and normal stress components. Plus body force components will be there. So for inviscid fluids, no shear stress at rest. So no shear stress will be there in the case of Euler equation. Pressure is only normal stress component. So that is. Uh, Euler equation. And third is the navy stoke equation. This is the general form applicable for viscous flow with force in terms of velocity components. So this is the most general form in which the force terms are all in velocity components or rate of components, rate of strain components. So that is called navy stoke equations. And also special cases it has toxication that is neglecting the inertia terms of, at the low Reynolds numbers the low velocity without any inertia so it's called toxication so the, that are the various forms of navy stoxication and out of this this uh, navy stoxication is, is the uh, basis of or CFD. So there is a, all the forces will be expressed in terms of stresses. So this force will introduce the stresses. And in all these equations, the force is in terms of stress. So you know, in viscid flow, what we have is the stresses. In viscid means no shear stresses, only normal stresses will be there. So the only stress will be the normal stresses, only sigmas, and also in fluids, this will be pressure. That is called hydrostatic state of stress. So only pressure will be there for inviscid flow. 
So for the force balance, sigma xx and here it will be this. So next force will be minus p. <coughs> it is sigma xx plus in the area, this will be what we have is, so replacing this, that forces will be there. So from this, uh, we can have a force balance. So conservation of momentum equation. The rate of change of momentum is F. So here, X direction, we write the equation in X direction. Rate of change of momentum is D by DT of rho U delta V. It is, delta V is the volume multiplied by rho is the mass, mass into velocity in, that is U is the velocity in X direction. D by DT of rho U delta V is the net force. So force in X direction is XX into the area. So here on this right face, left face, the so positive x direction is towards right. The so positive side is minus p. The so pressure will be always towards the surface. That's why it's minus. So minus p plus dou p by dou x delta x. That is the force per pressure on the right face minus the pressure on the left face, the respective areas. The area of this face is delta y delta z plus the body force. The surface force and body force is balanced by the net force. So similarly, we can write the other directions. So, and from all the direction together, we will get, or expanding this rho u, this will be this. So, do, so this is the, the convective, sorry, local acceleration multiplied by the density, then convective accelerations, and the pressure, this are resulting in the OP pressure gradient, and the body force in x direction. So this is one component of oiler equation in x direction. Similarly, we can write in the other directions. So the Euler equation is, what we have is the left hand side is mass into acceleration is the net force, pressure force plus body forces. So only force is the pressure force due to normal stress force. And in vector form, or in compact form, it is expressed as dou by dou t of del dot, del rho u, is uh, delta p delta y delta x using this uh, delta ij operator called the Kronecker delta. So it will have a value one if i is equal otherwise zero. So in this only delta P by dx will be there, et cetera. This is one form of momentum equation called uh, Euler equation, which is applicable only for inviscid flows. Another is this uh, equation, which is applicable for both uh, solid and fluids. Here, <coughs> the forces is in terms of stress only. We have, it is applicable for solid as well as fluid. So various stress components will be like this. So here the stresses, force will have, normal stress will be there, shear stress will be there, shear stress in different planes will be there. So the net force will be dou by dou x of sigma xx, dou by dou y of tau yx, dou by dou z of tau z x plus the body force. So these are net surface forces, net stresses due to surface forces, and this is a net stress for body force. And that is the body force, and that will be equated to rate of change of this. So equating the left hand side is the mass into acceleration and side this. So here the right hand side, in addition to the body force, we have surface force, but the all in terms of stress components. So this is the Cauchy's equation. So in x direction, y direction, and z direction. So this being in terms of stress, it is applicable for either for fluid, lit, or gas. 
So this is the basic equation. From this, if we use, or if we replace this stress components in terms of strain components, we get what is called the Navier-Stokes equations. For that, we have to, the stress components has to be related to the rate of strain. And uh, so here the left hand side, it's all velocity components. We'll be able to quantify or measure it. Whereas the stress components, it is not possible to measure in a fluid. So what are the stress components? So we need to replace these stress components in terms of velocity components. So that is, then only we'll be able, otherwise the number of unknowns also will be very large. So to reduce the number of unknowns, we need to report, we have to close the equations. That is close means number of unknowns should be the same as that of number of equations. So for that, we use the constitutive relations. So that were equations, of course, these equations are valid for any isotropic materials, that is solid, Newtonian fluids, non fluid, etc. Isotropic means we have considered only six stress components. So the property is independent of direction. If it was not uh, independent of direction, tau y x will not be this way. So we have more number of stress components. So this is limited to isotropic materials. So replacing the stress components with of strain components using constitutive equations for fluids, the Navier-Stokes equations is obtained. So the constitutive equations are, we have six stress components, out of which three normal stress components and uh, three are shear stress components. So the normal stress, sigma xx, sigma yy, and these are replaced with which is a combination of minus P, that is hydrostatic pressure or thermodynamic pressure plus the tau xx is due to the due to the motion of fluid or deformation of fluid in x direction. Similarly, pressure, pressure is same in all directions, and stress due to the deformation in y direction, deformation of the x. So, so this is replaced by this is called the two mu mu divided. This is called this is relation is obtained from Stokes hypothesis. So this is stress is related to rate of stain. The u u is a velocity component. Del dot v is our dilatation. It is sum of rho u by dot x plus rho u by dot. So this is that. So this is the Stokes hypothesis. And by introducing the Stokes hypothesis, the constitutive relations is uh, used, and this is the Newton's viscosity law. That is so. Substituting these two <coughs> into our Cauchy's equations and simplifying, we will result. Or what we get is the nearest Stokes equations dot p by dot x, etc. So this is the Cauchy's integration. We get the nearest of equations. So in x direction, y direction. So this is the total dot by dot t. So if you expanded form we have. So we have pressure gradient, then viscosity all the together, and on by three mu, this delta dot t etc. Is there. This left hand side is also expanded. We have this. So this is the expanded form of the nearest of equation which is the basis of the CFD. <clears throat> and the solution is impossible for this as such. So here this also known by various names. So this left hand side is, uh, this is temporal term, that is D by DT, temporal term or temporal inertia term. And this is uh, a nonlinear term, U into dou u is there. So this is non-linear term or inertia convective acceleration term. And this is the pressure gradient term or also this is called convective term. So in, in the terminology and literature, this term is inertia term. This is convective term, pressure gradient term or also source term because the pressure difference is the source 
for the flow. So pressure gradient term is also source flow, and this is called the viscous term or diffusion term, which diffuses the velocity in three directions: the so diffusion term or viscous term or dissipation term, etc. And this is due to the dilatation, change in size, possibility. In the case of incompressible fluids, this term will not be there. For incompressible flow, delta dot V is zero. That is, concentration of mass equation or dilatation is zero for incompressible. That is, incompressible is not change in size. Delta dot V is change in size and body forces. So this body force are also treated as source term. So for sol while solving, we have to treat different terms differently because the mathematical behavior of different terms are different. So in a it will be there only for unsteady flows and this inertia or convective terms will be there then viscous terms viscous flows then pressure gradient or source term this also and most of the incompressible flows this term will be will not be there and the, and for incompressible most of the flow solutions will be for incompressible Flows, that is the dilatation of zero, so the rotation will be reduced to this. So these are the three directions, x direction, y direction, y direction. So this is, uh, rho is constant, so it is taken out. So this is uh, acceleration, local acceleration in x direction, convective rotation in respective directions. Then. Convective acceleration u in respective direction, then pressure gradient in x direction, viscous diffusion in x direction. And x so r here as everywhere it is u in x direction equation. And everywhere it is v in the y direction equation. Everywhere it is w in z direction. So that is in compact, all this together we can put in a single equation. The y dot of rho u, v dot del rho u is equal to minus delta ij, delta p, all this, into del square u, where del square operator is, del dot rho is equal to dou by del. Dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square plus del square by dou z square. So this is the a single equation, all the three is there. So it is, uh, sorry, in x direction, y, if it is single equation, we have to replace this capital V. So in vector form, it is a compact notation of these equations. So, okay, in single form, it is this. Okay, we have capital, whereas in components, it is, we have small u's, the u, v, v, etc. This, if we replace a single equation, it should be like this. So in most of this, uh, general literatures, this will be just put in this form. So the special cases are Stokes equations. That is where for very low Reynolds number, there won't be any inertia term because velocity. So this is called the Stokes equation. So this is equation. That is called the creeping flows. Okay, all those terms can be summarized in this equation, all the equations. So what are the various terms are? We have local acceleration, convection terms, pressure gradient term, Viscous term, body force term. So if it is, uh, so for, for that each equation, so this is uh, rho dot by dot is the local acceleration term, convection term is this, delta H is pressure gradient, etc. So if we have cause equation, what we have is, we'll have a local acceleration term will be there, convection term will be there, and equated to this. This together is stress. Now separation between pressure and normal stresses this will be there. And body force also can be there. Euler equation we have, local acceleration will be there, will be there, pressure gradient will be there, but the viscous term, because Euler equation is for inviscid. So now viscous term will not be, is not there. And body force term also can be there. Near the strictification will have all the terms. Local acceleration will be there, convection term will be there, pressure gradient will be there, 
viscous term will be there, also body force term. In strokes, no inertia terms, only we have this pressure gradient, viscous term. So all these different forms is summarized in this table. So all the terms are there. So suitably, you can select depending on the type of the equation. So the neighbor stroke equation is having all the terms. That is the most difficult equation. And this solution for neighbor stroke equation is a millennium, million dollar challenge. That challenge is still open. In the final form of consideration of energy equation, where we, if there is a heat transfer or temperature change, in addition to this consideration of mass momentum, we need to have the energy equation. This is the energy equation in terms of temperature, the final form I have written in compact form and in expanded Cartesian is there. So if we, the heat transfer is taking place. We need to solve this energy equations also, which is it is only a single equation because temperature is a scalar quantity. And here this is the phi is called the viscous dissipation term, which is a function of this. Tau V is that is due to the shear stress variation, how they that is viscous forces are converted into temperature. Okay, and next is the, the moment for turbulent flows. So most of uh, the flows happening in nature are in our engineering applications are turbulent flows. Only the few cases we have laminar flows. And so far the navy education, conservation education, as we have dis discussed of uh, laminar flows. But what we need is the solutions or models for turbulent flows. So turbulent flow, as we know, this is, is very fluctuating, random, chaotic flows. Whereas laminar region, it is very smooth in layers. It is turbulent, it is a lot of mixing is taken. So it's modeling and uh, continuously changing. Fluctuation means continuously changing with respect to time. And it will have this uh, vortices of very minute scale to large, very large scale. So theoretically, <coughs> modeling such a complex phenomenon or such a complex flow is Im almost impossible. So what people have done is we take the fluctuating component over a period of time and average it. So what is this Reynolds decomposition the well is de resolved. That is the fluctuating and this is resolved into the so actual U is resolved into two components. One is a mean component, another is a fluctuating component. So mean component is there, over which a fluctuating component will be. And it will be, if it is a steady flow, this will be like that. If it is an unsteady flow, this fluctuating component uh, will have, and the mean also will be changing. <coughs> and Reynolds decomposition means resolving this actual U, V, W, S, et cetera, into mean component plus fluctuating component. That is U, da, U bar plus U dash, V bar plus V dash, et cetera, where U mean is the time average over a period of time. And the, such that the mean of these fluctuations over a period of time will be zero because the fluctuating component will be above the mean and below the mean over a period of time that happens to be zero because it balances above and below. Then this is, uh, so this occasions for turbulent flow is obtained by substituting this Reynolds decomposition into Navier-Stokes equation. So our Navier-Stokes equation for incompressible flow, we have the raw multiplied by dot by dot t of u, rho, rho, rho by dot t of u. So u is u bar plus u dash, then dou by dou x of u, u dou u by dou x was there. It was put in conservative form like the dou by dou x of u square. Then dou by dou y of u into, sorry, v into dou u by dou y. It's v is, this also is taken inside. So it is expressed in terms of conservative form and it is taken the average. So here 
into the our navier stoke equation for laminar flow we substitute this reynolds decompositions and taking the average and simplify what we get is called the reynolds average the navier stoke equation so this the navier stoke equation modified for the turbulent flows the original navier stoke equation is for laminar flow that is modified into this so what we have is the left hand side is similar or exactly similar to the laminar navier stoke equation only difference we see is u is replaced by q bar the velocity components are replaced by this uh, mean values the left hand side is also there except here you have a u dash average u dash u dash average u dash v dash average etc because actually these terms <coughs> are on the left hand side only that is because this inertia due to fluctuating amount is in the left hand side but it is on simplification shifted to the right hand side because dou by dou x is common there so that's why this minus sign because this is the inertia of fluctuating component in this acceleration term it is come <coughs> and while simplification is shifted to the right hand side the negative sign comes back like that so the equation only in x direction similarly we can have this and this is component that is mean of this fluctuating component is <coughs> called reynolds stress tensor is expressed as tau dash etc that is this so this is called reynolds stress tensor so this is uh, because of fluctuation in flow it introduces additional resistance to flow so in laminar flow the resistance flow is viscosity that is fluid viscosity here due to fluctuation also creates or this mixing between layers or momentum transfer between these layers because this fluctuation also creates this resistance and compared to this viscous so viscosity of the fluid this resistance is very large so this is called the apparent viscosity or apparent viscosity or turbulent viscosity so but this turbulent viscosity is not the property of a fluid it is the property of the flow higher the reynolds number higher may be the fluctuation and higher the resistance so it is not the property of fluid it is property of flow and this is called the reynolds stress tensor similar to the stress tensor due to viscosity or fluid property so similarly there you have two more y and z directions and this are usually known as trans reynolds average navier stoke equation so for turbulent flows this trans equation will be solved and obtaining this value is called the turbulence model so next this uh, the last topic is just touch upon the turbulent model so in that equation we have that reynolds stress tensor or the component of that is an a turbulent viscosity or apparent viscosity so the models for estimating the turbulent stress components is known as the methods for estimating the turbulent stress components is called a turbulence model so there are many options available so one is uh, we can either turbulence model or if other methods are we can direct numerical solutions that is if we can so that uh, very large range of eddies that is smaller to large eddies by by mathematically and study equations and solve it directly then it is the method is called a direct numerical solution for which there is no need of turbulence model but it is very difficult people are attempting that but uh, it is still a research topic the next is the uh, large eddy simulation then eddies minor to large various scales of eddies will be there so large eddy simulations that the eddies of a larger scale larger dimensions will be resolved and the smaller eddies will be modeled so partially 
or part of the smaller eddies are modeled and larger eddies treated as such, then it is called a large eddy simulation model. So that is the th other than that, all the eddies are modeled is called the turbulence modeling. And for which we have different uh, set of equations called uh, one is uh, zero equation model, that is prandial mixing length hypothesis. So zero equation means no differential equations are used. Additional differential equations in addition to is not required here. So zero equation means no ad differential equations, only one algebraic equation is there, that is Prandtl's mixing length hypothesis. And one equation model is one differential equation for turbulent kinetic energy is to be solved in addition to in into the our Navier-Stokes equation. That's all called one equation models for turbulence modeling. And there will be a differential equation for turbulence kinetic energy. And two equation models, additionally, two more differential equations to be solved. So usually we have a pair epsilon model, one differential equation for torsion of turbulent kinetic energy, another epsilon dissipation rate. So in addition to these five Navier Stokes equations, two more equations. So we need to solve seven equations. One is for turbulent kinetic energy and turbulent. So that is called a K epsilon model. Also K omega models also there. Instead of epsilon, it will be vorticity. So it's called K omega model. So they are called the two equations models. So we, the number of equations to be solved is will be more. Also we need additional boundary conditions for this epsilon and k. Another type of equation is second order models. So here are this first order not This second order means a tensor, a matrix form. Nine components will be there. So Reynolds stress models and algebraic Reynolds stress models are also there for modeling this turbulence. So where the equations are more number of equations, that is, uh, nine components of stresses are modeled separately. In algebraic stress equation, we will be using algebraic equation for this uh, stress models. So with this, uh, okay, I've taken beyond time. Okay, sorry. Okay, we'll just conclude. So what we have seen is, what is uh, continuum mechanics and uh, how we convert the phenomenon taking place, fluid flow and here uh, related systems into mathematical equations. And what are the, uh, just uh, the, uh, what are various methods of uh, solving this or converting the differential equation to algebraic equations. And detailed uh, of these methods will be discussed in the following sections. Okay, thank you all for listening. This I took uh, about uh, half an hour extra. Sorry, I didn't know that. Okay, so I, I thank all the participants for running this FTP. Any questions? If you have, please can have a short duration for this. Uh, sir, one question is there. For a flow over developing pipe, which modeling shall be used? Flow in the entrance region, that is developing flows. Yes. Developing flow, flows is a, it's a transient. So, so you have to use uh, the navy stroke equation with uh, the unsteady Unst term that is time dependent navy stroke equation is to be used but if it uh, if it is uh, say axisymmetry is there it can be that a uh, three dimension can be reduced if it is model in uh, polar coordinate it can be even made of uh, independent of uh, Z direct, sorry, theta. Axis symmetric means independent of theta. We'll have only axis direction, Z and R will be there. It's a two dimensional unsteady nearest location in polar coordinate will be the most suitable. But 
But for usually the developing length will be a small region, maybe up to 10 D or 20 D. Uh, another question from uh, Shubha Reddy. In electrode discharge machining, can we determine the temperature distribution at sparking region? Electrode discharge machining. Mm. That is, you have electrode. Which method can be used? The electrode and the workplace will be there. The MVTV, the flux will be there. Flux may be heated. So there will be a heat source and then temperature will be diffused through the solid as well as conversion. So that fluid solid interaction with the core. Conjugate heat transfer should be within. within the solid, there will be conduction will be there. And from the that is the discharge, there may be a plasma, the fluid. So from fluid to the solid, there will be heat transfer. Also, it also will be radiated and converted directly. So the well model you have to consider conduction. And the surrounding fluid, which is the plasma as well as the surrounding fluid. So conjugate heat transfer with conduction. Also, heat source also will be there because then the heat will be generated in that spark. Any other questions? Please. Uh, for a three different fluids, how shall be multi-phase simulation carried out in pipes and models used? Okay, for modeling two-phase or multi-phase flows, there are uh, different uh, approaches. The first is homogeneous flow models in which we assume it is a single phase we will take consideration of all the properties or homogeneous way and we that is void fraction etc but for three fluids you have to treat it separately so maybe that uh, drift flux model or the multi fluid model solve if you are going for a two fluid model for two fluids model for three fluids you have to be fluid model but you have to have three set, set of equations. equations so one equation for each phase so a mass conservation of mass equation for each phase so three conservation of mass equation will be there three conservation of momentum equations will be there and if we are heat transfer with the three conservation of energy equations also will be there. In addition to that, that is interfacial stress. stress. In between two phases, or between these different phases, there will be interaction at the surfaces. Suppose a bubble inside a liquid. So that surface with the liquid will have the different velocities. The drift velocities will be there. As well as shear stresses will be there. So there need additional equations or closing relations for this interfacial stresses. So these are will be very complex. But there are some homogeneous that take care of all the things in some empirical correlations. So all these in very complex systems like Multiphase flows, turbulence flows, etc. Lot of uh, empirical correlations are incorporated to simplify the, the mechanics, mechanics or the equations. But these empirical correlations are uh, generated from the experimental research 
and which will be suitable mostly for that type of for that, that uh, range, range of experimentation only so still lot of uncertainty is is taking is the the modeling of multiphase flows and in tablets so it's a area of research also and also one much how the interfacial stresses are modeled etc okay okay uh, any other questions uh, for a three phase lamina flow is preferred over turbulent whether laminar or turbulent is preferred no laminar or flow is uh, resulting from the phases but if you are if you want, want to, to model the laminar will be always easy because no, there won't be any turbulence complications will be there the laminar process will be easy to formulate and solve most of the multiphase flows there will be lot of uh, fluctuations and time dependent is bubbles may form or grow collapse etc so it will be lot of time dependent fluctuations will be there in actual or realistic multiphase flows but if we are modeling we can have any assumptions we can even keep it as laminar multiphase flows okay uh we are late by almost 30 minutes so thank you uh, thank you abubakar sir uh, for this uh, man, uh, knowledge packed session of modeling of computational uh, mechanics and uh, starting from uh, fundamentals uh, uh, from uh, uh, convert the physical problem to a mathematical model how how can we do it in a simple way and different methods for approximating differential equations into algebraic equations and uh, 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 telling about continuum concepts modeling computational mechanics and finally the turbulence modeling so thank you sir thank you very much thank you all the participants for your special listening i was not aware of i was excited my time sorry for that Okay. Any questions or any doubts? If you can please interact with me, and also very happy to have uh, audience from all over the nation to this program. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, participants, uh, we will have uh, the next section on 2 p.m. sharp. Thank you.